Welcome to IVF This, episode 142, IVF and Feeling Stuck. Hello, 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 my beautiful friends. I hope you are all doing so, so well today. Every single time I announce what episode number it is, I am just taken aback. It is insane to me that there are 142 original episodes for IVF This. Like that number is fantastical (laughs) to me. (laughs) We have more than that because we do um, occasionally run some like greatest hit episodes just to put them at the top of your podcast feed if you follow the podcast. But just 142 unique topics. It's just fantastic. So my mind is always blown. Um, You know, we're at over, I think we're getting close to 150,000 downloads for a pretty specific like niche topic, like mental health during IVF. (laughs) That number is insane. It's just crazy to me. You guys, you guys are amazing tuning in every week, subscribing to the podcast, whether you're on Apple, Spotify, Google podcast, Audible, whatever. I just, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Thank you so very much for tuning in. And thank you to my amazing podcast producer, Anthony, who makes this Chaos Goblin sound super polished and wonderful. So I'm just, I'm feeling immense gratitude for all of you today. So I just wanted to share that. But let's jump into the topic, right? I coach a lot on this topic, this feeling stuck, right? People bring this to me a lot during many sessions. This is probably one of the most common things that we talk about um, in either group coaching or one-on-one practice that I feel. And it's just this idea of feeling stuck. And I too have felt stuck so many times, like within the context of IVF and outside. I have felt stuck many, many times and I've had to coach myself on this subject. I have had to get therapy and coaching on this throughout the course of my entire life. So I'm hoping that by talking about it, by taking it and we can save you a little bit of pain and suffering here because that's the idea, right? We want to limit your suffering. We want to make this process just a little bit easier on you because this really isn't as difficult to fix as it may seem. But I know that when I have felt stuck in the past, it nothing has felt easy, let alone fixing how I felt, right? And so it can kind of feel like an impossible task, e- even an impossible ask of yourself or someone else, help me to get unstuck. And you really, I do believe that you know what to do, even though you may feel frustrated, you may feel powerless, um, you might feel hopeless or helpless or angry and and just stuck in that experience. So if this is you, I am your people, I get you. And so I'm going to talk a little bit briefly today about why it happens and then three ways that you can work on kind of improving your mindset without me. Not that I don't want to help you and not that I wouldn't love to help you, but for the vast majority of you, right? I said 150,000 unique downloads. For the vast majority of you, I'm never going to meet you, but I want you to have this information too. So first of all, you have heard me talk about how your thoughts create your feelings, and this is no exception. Now, let me be clear. (laughs) There are moments, especially in like the hurry up and wait nature that IVF can be, that it feels like way more than a thought. You're like, no, Em, I get what you're saying, but this is actually something, right? I'm stuck because we have to do more testing or I have to downregulate my hormones for three months. I have to wait X number of cycles before we can, you know, do another cycle or a transfer or my insurance to kick in. Um, Like these are, I hear you. I do. There are so many moments throughout this journey that we can feel helpless and we're kind of subject to other people's timelines and schedules. And that is kind of true and kind of not. We still have agency in that, right? And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that when we get to the three ways to get unstuck. But in the moments when you are feeling stuck or when you are thinking of a situation as something you are stuck with or stuck in or something like that, right? We're telling ourselves, I'm stuck, Maybe not in those exact words, but when we're describing how we feel stuck, that's the underlying message, right? I am stuck. And it will seem like the truthiest truth of all the truths that you've ever truthed in your entire life. It will seem like you are just describing the reality of what is happening in the world, in your world, from an objective standpoint. 
But what's really powerful to know is that this idea of being stuck isn't really a thing that exists outside of our minds, unless you're like in quicksand, which is much less of a dangerous thing than I thought it was when I was nine or 10 and watching Indiana Jones movies, right? That's really the only time you're stuck. You're stuck in tar, you're stuck in traffic, something like that. But what we're talking about is all the stuckness within the context of what you're thinking and how you're thinking. And I don't tell you that to question your sanity (laughs) or to make you feel bad or anything like that. I tell you that to empower you. Stuck is something that only exists in our thoughts. So how we think about our lives, our journey, our future, and ourselves, knowing that stuck is not a fact can be empowering, right? It can be... being stuck can't be proven in a court of law. It's not a place on a map that you can point to. It is not a universal truth. And that is good news, okay? When it's happening to us, when we're the one experiencing it, it doesn't feel like an idea in our mind. And I will be the first one to admit that, right? It will feel like it's just truth that you're stuck. It's just... hmm but it is a thought, a sentence in your mind. And when you think it, and when I think it, because I still think it, right? It doesn't feel good, right? It probably makes you feel frustrated, powerless, helpless, scared, anxious. We all probably feel slightly differently, right? We would all probably assign a different feeling or emotion to it, but thoughts cause feelings. And so whatever you're thinking is going to create a feeling and it's going to be pretty subjective to you and your situation and your experience. Although there is a lot of overlap, it's still going to be a very personal experience. But I think you know what I'm talking about. When you're thinking that you're stuck, it's easy to believe that stuck is a fact. When it's not, it only exists in our mind. And if we're new to this work or you're new to me, I want you to go back and listen to the episode called "Think The Think, Feel, Do Cycle. That's the title of it. You can go search it under IVF This. It goes into much more depth and detail about how our thinking creates our feeling and how our feelings then drive our actions or what we do or don't do, right? And so the crux of a lot of my work is that we don't have to believe all the thoughts that show up in our mind. Many, many thoughts just show up and are completely useless to us. And so if I'm stuck is one of the thoughts that you're believing and it is just in your way, you don't have to believe it just because it pops into your head, right? One of the things that I work on with my clients is called cognitive diffusion, which is like a fancy way of saying you are not your thoughts. (laughs) There are, there's you, and then there are the thoughts, the images, the cognitions in your mind, and they are two different things, okay? And once we can separate ourselves out from the thoughts that we're thinking, we then get to decide if we actually want to keep thinking them. Like intentionally decide, am I going to shift to this, something more productive, or am I going to continue bullying myself? And let's be honest, bullying ourselves comes much more easily, naturally, like defaultish, than slowing down, separating ourselves from our emotions, our thoughts, the experience, and then reframing it, right? That takes attention, intention, focus, right? It takes a lot of brain power, not as much as I think we think it does, but it does take that intentionality to it rather than the default setting of just, I'm just gonna crap on myself all the time, right? And all that to say that the goal is not 100% of the time. And I know my people, We are all type A perfectionists and we want what we want now. We want the switch to be flipped and for it never to flip to the off position again. And that is what we call unrealistic expectations, my beautiful friends, unrealistic expectations. All I want you to do is to start to imagine what the same situation would be like without the thought I'm stuck, right? If What would it be like to not believe that you're stuck? What would open up for you if you could get some space from that thought, if you could pull back from it or like zoom out from it, if you could see it as just a sentence and not believe, automatically believe that it was true, right? How is it possible you are not stuck? 
Can you find evidence to support the opposite of being stuck, right? It's like this brain-specific filter because what the brain is looking for is what the brain will find, right? So it's like this brain-specific filter. I've talked about it before. Um, It's called thought-colored glasses. That is also another episode um, that you can search for by title. But it's when our brain goes on the hunt for evidence to back up whatever it is we believe, no matter if the thought is helpful, no matter if the thought is universally true, it will just kind of go into detective mode and find all of this evidence and all of these clues to support whatever you believe about yourself. So if you continue to think, I'm stuck, the filtration system in your brain will continue to show you evidence of how you are stuck. And how we feel determines how we act, how we behave, what we do, what we don't do. So when you're feeling frustrated or powerless or helpless or scared, we don't take productive action, right? We tend to wallow or try to white knuckle our way through. And then we run out of steam, we burn out. And then it's a a whole nother cycle of how you're stuck and you can't do anything. You can't get it right. All of the, the, the bullying thoughts that we keep in our brain. And so I think one of the most common thoughts that might not seem like it creates a feeling of stuck is the thought I or we have to do IVF. Ooh, and let me tell you, (laughs) I have said this, I don't know how many times, and I have felt this to my core in the, like over the decade that we spent in, in the entirety of our family planning journey. On the surface, it felt true right? It feels true. Goodness knows it felt 100% facts to me, but it didn't give me any agency. And I don't believe it probably gives you any agency as well. In fact, that thought on top of making me feel stuck is completely deflating because it's entirely outside of you, right? Your life and your future happiness are entirely dependent on having access to IVF and success with IVF. That is offloading, your entire emotional state and well-being to a situation and process that you don't have complete control over. I mean, you have some control over it, but you certainly don't have control over the outcome, right? So here is, this is why we're talking about this, because I want you to feel like you have some power, some agency in this entire process, because you do, we just lose sight of it when we have this stuckness in our in our brains and and the feelings that those create, right? So the first thing that I want you to do to take your power back, to help you feel unstuck or to get unstuck, I want you to try tapping or meditation. There are so many layers of emotions and the compounded trauma that we experience during infertility and IVF. We have to sift through some of that, not all of it, right? But we have to sift through, especially the really powerful stuff before we can get to any cognitive work, right? The feelings, especially the big, present, powerful, overpowering feelings, we have to deal with those first. Otherwise we're trying to do cognitive work and it's going to feel like you're Charlie Brown and the teacher is talking. Nothing's going to stick, right? You're not, it's not going to make any sense. So I've linked a great intro to tapping video Um, and one of my favorite mindfulness meditations in the show notes. And I've talked about tapping a little bit on the show before. I had a colleague on in an interview. I think it was IVF and tapping. Um, Her name is Sarah. She's absolutely wonderful. And she talks about tapping within her her group, which is called uh, the Fertile Mindset Group. It's a fantastic group, and I absolutely adore Sarah. So if you want some more background on tapping, you can check out that episode, um, her group, go to YouTube and just type in tapping or emotional freedom technique, EFT. You're going to find a plethora of information just at the starting point of what I've kind of connected in the show notes. And I I, I know a lot of you, if you're anything like me, <laughs> you might balk <laughs> at meditation or tapping. But in the next point, when I'm going to talk about reframing your thoughts, those reframes will not necessarily be believable, which is probably one of the most important aspects of cognitive reframing. So the reframe itself will not be accessible to you and they won't work. Long-term, they will not be effective for you unless we deal with the clear and present emotions. Okay. I implore you, even if you feel silly tapping, 
I did many times <laughs> or doing meditation. Many times I have felt silly, right? I implore you to give it a try. I prefer tapping because my neuro spiciness, it kind of makes me hard, it makes it hard for me to sit down and just focus on meditation. So it's more effective for me to actually feel like I'm quote unquote doing something. So tapping is more my speed, but you know me, you know, this podcast, everything is cafeteria style. We're just trying on things until we find something that works and is helpful to us. So if you try tapping, start tapping on the side of your hand. Um, and it can be, even though I feel stuck, it's okay for me to love and accept myself. You say that three times, right? That's what's called the setup statement in tapping. And it just gives you a frame of reference for what you're going to talk about while you're tapping. Even though I feel stuck, it's okay for me to love and accept myself, set it up, state the truth, even though I feel stuck, right? And then you follow it with a grounding statement that feels true to you. So it's okay to love and accept myself, doesn't feel true. Then tapping something with, right, right here, right now, I am safe, or this is the truth of how I feel. But we want to acknowledge the truth and then ground ourselves, okay? So then we just tap all of the points, right? I am so stuck. This feeling is awful. I have a lot of emotions. I want you to name everything, what you fear, why it feels so powerless. Whatever it is that you are going through, just tap through the points and you state what feels true to you until it shifts. And it will shift. It will if you keep with it long enough, right? Even if you don't believe that tapping will work for you, it can still work, right? You don't have to walk into a tapping session believing, oh, this is definitely going to work. You can be skeptical. I think I have gone into most of my tapping sessions with a healthy dose of skepticism. That's just my nature. Like, oh, this is BS. It's not going to work. And then lo and behold, one or two cycles of tapping and Emily's a brand new girl. You just, like, I just want you to do it. Just try it and let it be weird if it feels weird at first, that's okay. Most things feel weird at the very beginning when you've never done it before. And that's okay. Right. And then when the emotion isn't so intense, when you actually do feel safe and you kind of notice your shoulders drop and it feels like you can breathe again and you can think again, then we focus on cognitive reframing. Right. So that's number two. Reframing or challenging your thoughts is like the bread and butter of the work that I do. Right. Feelings first, then reframing. And reframing has roots in cognitive behavioral therapy, positive psychology. You know, I, I pull a lot of that stuff um, into my coaching practice and certainly in the topics for the podcast episode. But the idea behind reframing isn't that we're tr like an apartment landlord trying to slap a coat of bright white paint on a shit stained wall. That's not, that's not helpful. That's not what reframing is. We are taking unproductive thoughts to a believable, empowering, and productive place, right? So we're taking crappy thoughts and making them not better. I don't want you to think of it as like a better or worse sort of situation. It's not that binary, right? But more useful. That's the point. Those thoughts, I'm stuck, I hate this, right? some, of the, some of the thoughts that I'm going to give you in just a moment for reframing, those are not useful to us right? They, they usually just have a shutting down, feeling overwhelmed or, you know, isolate ourselves, things like that. That is not useful. It's not productive in any manner. So that's what cognitive reframing is about. It's not about toxic positivity or just trying to, you know, flip a switch from this is terrible to this is wonderful. We got to build bridges between this is terrible and this is wonderful, and that's what cognitive reframing, doing that step-by-step -step process, right? So here's an example. I'm waiting for my period so we can start the next round or a round. So a reframe would look like we start our next round or we start our round after my next period. I know it's a subtle shift and it's still true, but the inherent negative connotation of waiting we don't like it. Like, we don't like to wait. I don't like to wait. I'm not a good weighty person. So thinking about it as a weight automatically carries a negative connotation. We're just shifting words around, guys. That's all we're doing. I shouldn't say guys. Ladies, my friends, beautiful friends, we are on this. Okay. <laughs> Another one. I can't do this. Not useful, not productive. 
I know it doesn't say stuck in it, right? The stuck, the word stuck is not in the the phrase or the sentence or the thought and really any of them that I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you like five or six, but that doesn't mean that having those thoughts doesn't create this overwhelming or overall sense of stuckness, right? Okay. So I can't do this. We could reframe that to, I can do hard things even when I'm terrified, scared, overwhelmed, anxious, right? You can because you do them all of the time. This world is a scary, overwhelming, can be a scary, overwhelming place to live and you still do it, right? So the evidence is there to support the fact that you can do hard things even when you're scared, even when you're anxious, and even when you're overwhelmed. So the next thought would be, I hate my life. The reframe could be something like, it's really hard to want something and work hard for it and not have it yet. And that's okay. But it doesn't mean my entire life is bad. I just wish this part was different, right? All of that is true. It is hard. We can acknowledge the hard. Acknowledging the hard doesn't mean that we stay in the unproductive place. It actually gives you a voice to that, that challenge, that, that pain. And when we can give a voice to that pain, we actually get to decide what we're doing with it instead of just letting it sit there and fester and feel unproductive. Another one is I'm not doing well. I Man, oh, goodness. I If I had a dollar for every time I said this during any point, especially like the first year and a half at the start of our journey, whoo, I was not good. I was not doing well, right? Here's the reframe. I want to make my mental health as much of a priority as my physical health during this process. I am resourceful and I can figure out how to build a support system. You are resourceful. For God's sakes, you found a podcast that deals specifically with IVF and mental health. You did that. You had to come find me, right? I didn't show up at your door and say, hey, you got to listen to this podcast. You found me. You're applying these principles, these content, all of this information to your life. You are a resourceful individual, okay? Um, last thought, because I could talk about this for ages and ages and ages, but I need to stress less, right? I'm so stressed something like that, that variation. Again, that overall feeling of stuckness. So I need to stress less or I stress too much, right? So the reframe could be, I am human. In an inherently stressful situation, I am learning how to or prioritizing myself to make sure I am in the best place emotionally and mentally for this process right? And you don't have to use my words. You can take my words and wordsmith them around to where they make sense for you. They're more truthful for you. They're more believable for you, right? I'm not the arbiter of how to reframe your thoughts. You are. You already know how to do this. I'm just giving you some examples, some guidance on how to create that, right? And none of that, again, I'm going to say this again because I think it bears repeating. None of that directly referred to stuckness, but that's what's so insidious about this idea of I am stuck, right? It can look and sound like a lot of different things, but the end result is the same, this overarching feeling of stuckness. Okay. Lastly, and I'm always, this is always going to be something that I suggest, (laughs) be so very gentle and compassionate with yourself. No one has a how to people or deal with, manage your mind, and blah, 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 during IVF, during infertility. Nobody has that handbook for us. We have to be willing to be compassionate to ourselves and to be okay learning. This is not some sort of divine knowledge that I woke up with one day, right? I I don't have a sage... Yoda or something like that, giving me this information, I had to learn this stuff. And if you know anything about me, I don't really learn anything unless it's the hard way. (laughs) So personally, during my own infertility and IVF journey and professionally, I had to learn these concepts and I had to slowly, and I mean slowly, (laughs) 
because again, I don't learn anything unless it's the hard way. I had to slowly integrate these things into my life, but it's worth it. If you're willing to be a student, if you're willing to learn, I swear to you on everything, it is a worthy process. Okay. It is worthy of your time to learn. If I did it, you can do it. I am not special guys. You have all of this inside of you already and you will get there and I will be with you the whole way through as long as you need me. Okay. That is what I have for you today, my friends. I hope you have a great week and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of IVF This. If you like what you've heard, click subscribe and follow to make sure you don't miss an episode. And if you want to learn more, head over to www.ivfthiscoaching.com to learn how to work together.